was the case. Islam resolves this question by emphasizing that any religion which is rooted in human psyche transcends time. And as human psyche is unchangeable, so that religion which truly is rooted in human psyche becomes unchangeable if it does not get too much involved with the transient situations of man as he progresses forward, belonging to a certain age. If that religion sticks to those principles which emanate from the study of human psyche, then such a religion has the potential of becoming a universal religion. And that is exactly the claim made by the Holy Quran. فَأَقِمْ وَجْهَكَ لِلدِّينِ حَنِيفًا فِتْرَةَ اللَّهِ اللَّتِي فَتْرَ النَّاسَ عَلَيْهَا لَا تَبْدِيلَ لِخَلْقِ اللَّهِ ذَالِكَ الدِّينُ الْقَيِّمُ وَلَكِنَّ أَكْثَرَ النَّاسِ لَا يَعْلَمُونَ so set thy face to the surface service of religion as one devoted to God and follow the nature made by Allah, the nature in which he has created mankind. There is no altering the creation of Allah. That is the right religion, but most people do not know. Again, by way of prophecy, the Holy Quran declares that Islam is bound to emerge one day as the one religion of the entire mankind. He it is, that is God, who has sent his messenger with the guidance and the religion of truth that he may cause it to prevail over all religions, even if those who associate partners with God do not like it. And the question is, how a religion can claim international, universal, global, and yet not cause frictions? No religion with a universal message in effect and global ambition unite humankind under one flag can even momentarily entertain the idea of employing force to spread its message. Souls can win territories but not hearts. Force can bend heads but not minds. So also Islam does not permit the use of this instrument, instrument that is force for the spread of its message. It declares, La ikraha fiddin, there is no coercion in matters of religion whatsoever. The righteousness has emerged as distinct from the wrong. So there is no need for any coercion. Let it, leave it to the people, leave it to the human beings to decide where the truth belongs. Then, addressing the holy founder of Islam, God warns him about his true position. He says, فَزَكْرِرْ إِنَّمَا أَنْتَ مُزَكْرِرْ Lasta alayhim bi musaytir, admonish therefore, for thou art but an admonisher. Thou hast no authority to compel people. Then the Holy Quran proceeds with the same subject by declaring, Fain aradu, famar salnaka alayhim hafiza, in alayka illal balaq. If they turn away, then remember that we have not sent you as uh, a guardian over them who can compel them. In Alaika al there is nothing 
for you but to convey the message and leave it to God that is implied to make the message effective. If the struggle begins after the delivery of message, if there are hostile reactions, then what would happen? This is the natural consequential question which is addressed by the Holy Quran in the verse which I am going to recite. Idfa billati he ahsanu sayya. Idfa billati he ahsanu sayya. Nahnu alamu bima yasifun. When you confront evil, remove it with goodness. Friend for Islam with beauty, asan means something beautiful. Do not repay evil with evil. And then the Holy Quran declares a principle which is so beautiful, so outstanding, so universal, and so wonderful. It declares man halaka ambayyina. لِيَحْلِكَ مَنْ حَلَكَ عَمْ بَيِّنَا وَيَحْيَا مَنْ حَيَّا عَمْ بَيِّنَا وَإِنَّ اللَّهَ لَسَمِيُّ نَلِيمُ Survival or annihilation will be determined by manifest arguments. Let him perish who is doomed to perish on the authority of reason and let him survive who is declared worthy of survival on the authority of reason. This is the everlasting principle which has played the most important role in the evolution of mankind. Survival of the fittest is the essence of this message and that is in fact the methodology of the spread of the message known to Islam. All else which you hear is anything but Islam. Freedom of speech, speech and expression is highly vital to the spread of a message as well as to restore the dignity of man. No religion is worthy of any consideration which does not address itself to the restoration of human dignity. So it's unbelievable that in a religion like Islam there are restrictions imposed on the freedom, on freedom of speech. Liberty and emancipation are the two important slogans which are influencing the entire world with varying intensity in different connotations today. There is no doubt whatsoever. There is no doubt whatsoever that man is gaining a greater awareness and consciousness with regard to the importance and value of liberty. There is a pressing need for emancipation felt everywhere in the world, but from what? Yoke of foreign rules, dictatorships, fascism, theocratic or other regimes with totalitarian philosophies, oppressive democracies and corrupt bureaucracies, economic stranglehold of the poorest countries, of the poor countries by the rich, ignorance, superstition, fetishism. Islam champions the cause of liberty from all these maladies, but not in a manner as to cause disorder and chaos an indiscriminate vengeance causing suffering to the innocent. Wallahu la yuhibbul fasad, fasad is the message of Islam which means God does not like disorder. Islam like every other religion emphasizes the role of balanced freedom in a spirit of give and take. The concept of absolute freedom 